radio broadcasters, also known as radio announcers, provide information and entertainment through the medium of radio and may work with a local, national or international audience. There are a wide range of interests that radio broadcasters may cater to, hosting shows and carrying out interviews in fields such as music, politics, or sports. Radio broadcasters need to have extremely strong verbal communication skills but should also be competent carrying out interviews, researching and choosing appropriate topics of entertainment, and operating the necessary studio equipment. Radio broadcasters may start their careers by earning a post-secondary certificate or associate's degree, however, a bachelor's degree is the most common education. Alternatively, they can learn through on-the-job training. As a radio broadcaster, you are the voice of a radio station, introducing songs, reporting news, providing ad-lib commentary and taking requests from listeners. At some smaller stations, you'd also be responsible for such wide-ranging tasks as staffing the control board and selling advertisements. In some cases, you may write or revise the content for your broadcast. You could also interview guests and moderate community events to promote your radio station. You can expect high competition for available broadcaster positions. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that employment of radio and television announcers is expected to see a rise of 10% from 2020 to 2030, partly due to the rise in technology and consolidation of radio stations. You might have a better chance at landing an entry-level job at a small radio station, especially if you possess technical skills and proficiency with computers. You could have to work unusual hours for early morning programs or late-night shows. You can take advantage of opportunities available while you're in high school, such as taking public speaking classes or doing announcements for your school's radio station. If your high school doesn't have a radio station, you could gain valuable experience trying to start one with assistance from an organization such as the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System. You can also volunteer with local radio stations for additional preparation. While you can find a certificate or associate's degree program in radio broadcasting, completing a bachelor's degree program in broadcasting, communications or a related field may give you an advantage. You'll take coursework in announcing, production programming, communication law and electronic media. You'll learn how to perform public relations and write for radio broadcasting. These programs might also include hands-on experiences at radio stations to help you learn practical performance skills. Since much of the skill involved in radio broadcasting is learned on the job, you can demonstrate work experience to prospective employers by completing an internship. Many bachelor's degree programs incorporate internships through the campus station or nearby businesses. As an intern, you may not get much, or any, on-air time, but you can learn about the behind-the-scenes station operations and gain networking opportunities with people in the industry. Once you land an entry-level job, you can prove yourself by showcasing your technical skills and on-air personality. There might not be much room for advancement at smaller stations, but you may be able to move to a higher level job at a larger station by demonstrating that you can attract listeners. You can build your reputation by working on your announcing and performance skills to cultivate and keep a sizable audience. You may also help with your career development and furthering your networking opportunities by joining the National Association of Broadcasters. For those who are interested in working in broadcasting, there are many careers similar to becoming a radio broadcaster. If communicating information to a large audience is appealing, consider becoming a journalist or news reporter, a position that requires researching and formatting news stories for the general public. Broadcast news analysts also report on current events, but these professionals generally have more experience in their field and offer commentary and opinions as well as factual information. If the technological side of broadcast appeals, you may want to become a producer and learn how to conceptualize, organize, and execute every aspect of broadcast media. Like radio broadcasting, all of these career paths are open to students who complete a bachelor's degree in broadcasting or a similar field, such as journalism or communications. If you enjoy the idea of working in a radio station, then you might pursue a career in radio. 
The steps toward a career in radio will vary, depending on the type of position you prefer. Some degree of training and networking will likely be required. In this article, we discuss how to get a job in radio, as well as the types of skills that you should work on. A job in radio can vary, depending on your position. A radio broadcaster may discuss news events or weather conditions. If you work for a sports radio broadcaster, then you may exclusively discuss the latest sports trades or upcoming events. Some people may pursue a career as a station manager or producer. This person is more involved in planning the content and managing the radio hosts. A few other positions that may be available in radio include manager, DJ, radio host, or account specialist. The positions available in radio are usually creative, technical or management. The career path and interview process for each one can differ significantly. Your daily job duties will also vary. Regardless of which position you seek in radio, you can expect a high-paced environment. Radio employees will often have to think fast and adjust to changes. Getting a job in radio may require certain training and internship experiences. You can get a job in radio with the following steps. 1. Volunteer your time. Many radio professionals begin their careers in a volunteer position. Even in an unpaid position, it can be highly competitive. Evaluate what makes you different including why you want a career in radio, as well as the specific skills and experience that you will bring to a position. You will need to demonstrate why the station should choose you, rather than a different candidate. Volunteer work may encompass many different parts of the radio station. You might answer phone calls, attend outreach events or even be involved in the marketing efforts of the station. Even if your current volunteer position does not include duties that you want to work in, it can be a necessary step toward finding employment. One of the most important things that hiring managers look for when choosing employees in radio, is experience. You might find employment positions with a local radio station or at your campus radio station. To attend a broadcasting school. If you want to work in broadcasting, you may decide to attend broadcasting school. Most radio positions do not require the completion of broadcasting school, but doing so can be a good way to stand out among your competitors when applying to volunteer or paid positions. Some colleges may also offer degrees that can help get a radio position. You might pursue an associate's or bachelor's degree in audio production or sports broadcasting. Other fields that may be beneficial in a career in radio include communications or journalism. Attending school can help those aspiring to work in radio learn the technical side of things, while also understanding FCC regulations. The great thing about attending broadcasting school is that they often have connections that may be able to get you an internship. The experience earned in an internship position is valuable, allowing you to develop your skills and network with people already working in the field. Networking is an important part of finding available careers in radio. 3. Develop the necessary skills. Once you have completed training, it is a good idea to recognize the necessary skills of a radio employee and begin developing them. If you earn an interview, they will inquire about more than your experience. A few skills that you may want to work on and develop include Problem solving, radio employees will usually need to come up with solutions to problems fast. This may include technical issues or finding solutions to changing radio schedules. Adaptability, the ability to adapt to new situations and topics quickly is important if you plan to work in radio. Practice your ability to change subjects or respond to questions quickly. Marketing, a big part of working in radio is advertising. By learning promotions and how to effectively advertise products, and the radio station, you can demonstrate why you will be a good candidate. Technical, regardless of the position in which you work in radio, you will likely be in charge of using certain technical equipment. Develop your technical troubleshooting and implementation skills. Communication, communication skills are a must in radio. Whether you are working with the producer or communicating with people who call into the station, you will need strong verbal and listening skills. Knowledge of FCC guidelines, radio employees are expected to know, 
and follow Federal Communications Commission FCC guidelines. Other skills may be needed, depending on the type of position you pursue. For example, if you will be involved in the information technology side of things, you may need audio and visual training too. If you want to work as a radio personality, then you may need to work on your social media and digital presence and build a following. Radio stations will be more likely to offer you an interview, and hire you, if you already have a good following. Some aspiring radio personalities may begin their own stations, usually in the form of a podcast. This can be a good way to practice your radio skills. Attending and joining professional associations and groups can also help with networking and finding out about open radio jobs. A few include the National Organization of Broadcasters and the New York State Broadcasters Association. Developing a portfolio, or CD, can also be helpful. You can use it to demonstrate your desirable radio skills. 4. Apply to radio positions. Applying to radio positions may include searching listings or contacting radio stations directly. Either way, before applying, it can be helpful to go over your resume. Additionally, you will want to create a customized cover letter with each application. You also might begin preparing for an interview. Keep in mind that an interview with a radio station may look different than a typical interview. You may be asked to demonstrate your radio skills, including showcasing your skills on air. When preparing for your radio interview, practice both traditional questions and your radio-specific skills. When you've been in the radio industry for a while, you start to acquire top-secret morsels of information the average radio lover has no idea about. Presenters may be talkative on air, but they're tight-lipped when it comes to a few behind-the-scenes things. Working in radio is more than just talking in between tracks and playing your favorite songs. There's so much hard work, so many challenges, and multiple weird scenarios that go into the profession. One celebrity interviews aren't always as authentic as they seem. On occasion, a celebrity's team may send a PR package over to a station before they are scheduled to have a conversation with an interviewer on air. The package may include things like information about their new album, or a song they have in the works. These packages are sent so DJs are in the know about what their interviewee is up to, the celebrity can promote their work, and a unique, Secure interview for several stations can be recorded. However, sometimes the PR package method can be a bit lazy. Every now and then, the packages will include pre recorded answers from the celebs, used so that DJs can record an interview with a celebrity without the celebrity actually being in the studio. If you've ever wondered why celebrities are giving the exact same boring answers to different questions across various stations, this could be why. We know, it totally feels like cheating. But the method does give smaller stations a chance to get their hands on coveted celebrity interviews. To a comfy chair is the key to success. Unless you are manning a station yourself, the layperson typically doesn't think about how time-consuming DJing a radio station can be. On a typical day in the studio, you're sitting down for hours on end. Some people in radio even start their days at 4 a.m. and have to slap on a happy persona despite morning grogginess. So you need more than just cups of coffee to succeed in radio, you also need a really comfy chair. Sometimes radio presenters stand up or take stretch breaks to combat the exhaustion of sitting for so long. Yes, you can get exhausted sitting. This can actually be better as it keeps them more alert and opens up the diaphragm when talking. 3. Radio is absurdly competitive with very little reward. Only the lucky 1% are able to make millions of dollars running a station or being a radio DJ. This business is very competitive. You sometimes find yourself envying someone for coming up with a great idea for a segment idea or giveaway, even if they're a great friend. Other times, you'll lament over the fact you have to drop about $1,000 on new equipment just so your online radio station can keep up with the big leagues. There's no doubt, it can be expensive and exhausting. For your phone probably holds more songs than a radio station rotation. We've heard the question so many times, 
Why do radio stations play the same songs over and over? No, they can't just play whatever tune they want over Spotify. Songs are entered into the station system manually, all following specific guidelines. Don't even get us started about copyright and the DMCA. A typical radio station may have about 1,600 songs in rotation. That's why you'll often hear very popular songs, and predominantly very popular songs, on many radio stations. Entering many songs into the system is hard work, so the songs that do make it through need to be crowd pleasers. Not to mention songs need to be malleable enough so programmers can insert promos and other cool transitions into the mix. Five radio stations are sent hundreds of songs, and only add a few every week. Segwaying off of radio song selection, because manually entering songs into a station is hard work, stations need to be picky about what new material they enter in every week. You can't even imagine how many emails from new artists they receive every week asking them to play their latest song on their station. In a YouTube video from former radio employee Jet of In Third Person, he explains that his station's program director from the mid-2000s wouldn't hesitate to throw away songs that didn't move him. I remember it, he took a song, put it in the CD player, he listened to this guy's song for five seconds. The moment he started, there's the intro, guy starts singing. He stopped, ejects the CD, puts it back in the case, closes the case. Whips it in the garbage, I was like whoa, you just threw that guy's album in the garbage. Jet says. And it continued. I mean he didn't necessarily throw all of them with force, but a lot of those CDs, like some of them was just like okay, not this week and some just went into the garbage. Jet explains earlier in the video that despite all the song submissions they got, the country station he worked for typically only added four to five new songs per week. Six being a DJ is really just sitting in an empty room and talking to yourself. It takes a special kind of person to listen to their own voice for hours on end every day. It's so easy to fall into the trap of rambling away like your Christian Slater in Pump Up the Volume. You wonder if people are listening, and on some stations, especially student radio, they most likely aren't. Pro tip, when you're just sitting there, doing nothing in between links, bring something to keep you occupied. Maybe a magazine or a notebook to doodle in. 7. There's a constant fear guest callers will swear on air. Even though they're not involved with the station in any way, callers can truly make or break shows. A funny caller instantly makes your segment more entertaining. A bad caller just makes things more awkward for everyone. Particularly when you're running a family-friendly station, there's a constant fear a caller will mistakenly swear on air. We get it, life happens. If little old Joe who calls in every night isn't having a bad day, he may accidentally stub his toe and let out an F-bomb for hundreds of listeners to hear. Fortunately, Many talk radio stations nowadays have a dump button that will remove the last few seconds of audio, which is handy if an angry caller decides to unleash his sailor mouth on air. 8. A presenter may be pretending to love the song they're playing. Yes, sometimes DJs have to play songs they don't enjoy. Sometimes they've heard the same song over and over every day and are so sick of it. Sometimes it's 4 a.m. and they're really tired and would rather be in bed at the moment. Despite all of these struggles, they still have to put on a happy, energetic persona and present the next song like it's the best thing since sliced bread. Why? Because they love their listeners, and part of their job is to make them feel good. 9. There are so many rules and guidelines. So. Much. Red tape. You can't just chat idly between songs, there are usually stringent rules and style guides to follow, even for the wildest of shows. Not to mention there's the FCC in America, which is an organization that regulates traditional broadcast radio stations and fines them for infractions. Those regulations include lists of words divided by how offensive or inappropriate they are, and repeating them on air can result in big bad fines. However, it's not so terrible. The more experience you have in the industry, the more you know how to get away with certain things. And luckily, 
With internet radio, there are less rules to follow. 10 But at the end of the day, it's still a wonderful job. Although there may be tons of nuisances, there are even more perks to being a radio station worker. You get to play music and talk for a living, some callers are hilarious and even become loyal contributors, and the rough days can still be loads of fun. That's why the secrets above are secrets, working in radio is so great, there's no need to complain about the annoying parts. If you're a radio fan, we hope you learned a new thing or two about the industry. And if you're a radio station owner, we hope you found this list relatable. Until next time, happy broadcasting. Thank you for watching this video.